从二零零八年的同一个世界、同一个梦想，到二零二二年的一起向未来，中国积极参与奥林匹克运动，坚持不懈弘扬奥林匹克精神。世界期待中国，中国做好了准备，我们将竭诚为世界奉献一届简约、安全、精彩的奥运盛会，践行更快。更高、更强、更团结的奥林匹克格言。The 2022 Winter Olympic Games open in Beijing on February 4th. Against the backdrop of a grand spectacle, the massive financial toll has made the already fragile finances of China and the Olympics-associated region worse. The Chongli district of Jiangjiakou City is one of three major venues for the Beijing Winter Olympics, providing eight facilities that will result in 51 gold medals. It's 220 kilometers from Beijing. Now the small city is running a large financial deficit. According to public records, Jiangjiakou has one of the highest GDP to debt ratios in the country, jumping from 30% in 2018 to 48% in 2020. Through a high-speed rail purposely built for the Winter Olympics, it takes 90 minutes from Beijing to the Chongli district. This small city has a dream to become an internationally renowned ice and snow sports and tourism destination. With a Winter Olympics town, media center, and several competition venues already built. According to the Financial Times on January 31, 2021, Chongli District's annual financial spending had more than tripled since Beijing began bidding to host the Winter Olympics in 2013, reaching a peak of 3.6 billion renminbi or 570 million US dollars in 2019, mainly for investment in sports related facilities. But the district's revenue grew by less than two thirds to just 90 million US dollars over the same period. The director of Chongli's Finance Bureau said in November 2021 that the district was facing a huge shortage of funds for Olympic related projects and that higher levels of government had not yet reimbursed the Chongli district for payments made for those events. These issues need to be addressed immediately, the official said. It's not clear how central and local finances are split for the 2022 Winter Olympics. But undoubtedly, the pandemic and the diplomatic boycott by many Western countries have disrupted the development plans of this small city. After Beijing's Olympic bid, Chongli's property prices skyrocketed. Chinese media reported that in 2019, Chongli District scheduled 90 key projects with a total investment of 15.4 billion US dollars. On this modest piece of land, countless high-rise buildings sprang up along the river and deep into the mountains. A series of government policies subsequently curbed property prices here, first by restricting people from outside the city from buying here, which quickly cooled the market. Then in August 2020, Beijing authorities issued three red lines targeting the real estate industry, which caused a collapse of real estate companies in Chongli by more than 30% and devastated the local government's revenue from land sales. The devastating impact on the local economy has to do with the rapid economic decline and outbreak restrictions in the past two years. With a local population of 100,000, more than 30,000 people are directly or indirectly involved in the ski industry. That is, one out of every three people here is in a snow sports related industry. Over the past two years, entry into Chongli requires a negative nucleic acid test within 48 hours and a retest upon arrival. The number of skiers from Beijing and the surrounding area has dropped sharply. During the Olympic Games, ski resorts that aren't part of the Olympics are closed and visitors aren't allowed to enter the Chongli district. The Olympics have hit us hard, said Daniel Lee, who runs a local ski equipment store. He told the Financial Times that because of the Beijing government's strict COVID-0 measures, the resort will be closed from January to March. He can't afford the annual rent of 30,000 US dollars for his ski equipment store and plans to leave Chongli District in search of work. Because of the government policy, the ski season on which we depend for our livelihood 
ended early and we were not compensated for our losses, he said. A number of ski resort managers in Chongli said that revenues dropped by more than half in 2020, recovered in 2021, but shrank again in 2022 because of the Winter Olympics. As we have discussed in previous episodes, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, has gone to great lengths, at great cost, to ensure the success of the Games. In Beijing and surrounding areas, a large number of residential areas have been closed off because of the Games. Nucleic acid testing has been conducted for the entire local population. A lot of heavy industries across China have been shut down and the cost of stability maintenance has increased everywhere, causing incalculable losses. Here are some more examples of how Beijing burns cash. Despite being called China's snow capital, Chongli is like Beijing, located in the northern part of China. It's cold, dry, and lacking in water and snow. As a result, it has been reported in the Chinese media that over 60% of the snow in the Olympic facilities in Chongli is artificially produced. The French newspaper Le Monde published a long article in early January 2022 stating that the Beijing Winter Olympics would use 100% artificial snow. A total of 2 million cubic meters of water has been used to make snow for the Beijing Winter Olympics which is equivalent to the annual water consumption of a city of 12,000 residents. In the surrounding area, including the city of Jiangjiakou, where Chongli is located, China has been transporting water in underground pipes 7 kilometers and 30 kilometers long for several years, storing it in huge reservoirs. This has led some scholars to question whether it is not necessary to consider the natural conditions in selecting the future host city for the Winter Olympics. Since a city without snow can host the Winter Olympics, can a city without mountains become a host in the future? A Chinese netizen named Yo Ke revealed that the snowmobiles for the Olympic venues came from Germany and the United States, and hundreds of experts and operators from abroad have been working for more than a month at a cost of no less than 30,000 US dollars per person per day. The temperature is minus 11 degrees. And is it the max power? No, it's not on the max power. Okay. And this is an automatic regulation. It will open the valve regarding to the temperature and regarding to what kind of quality the operator requests. So why does it bring it to max? Okay, I see. But the goal is not to have the max. The goal is to have the best, the best quality. So they have to turn the machine on the wind direction. If they go again, so it will be damaged. So the operator, he has to follow the wind direction all the time. This is a specific problem on these, on these places, actually. But right. if, like on the other place we were, the wind is almost always on the same direction. So they know on the beginning of the season how to set the machine. But here with those valley, the wind is turning and it's not always going the same, so it's a hell of a work for the operator actually. In 2010, when the Winter Olympic Games were held in Vancouver, Canada, the organizers had to use helicopters and trucks to transport snow from other mountains. For the first time in the history of the Games due to the severe lack of snow in the ski slopes led by the abnormal climate, Subsequently, the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia, and the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea, both used artificial snow to varying degrees. However, 100% artificial snow in Beijing is the first time in the history of the Winter Olympics. In addition, in order to uphold an image of a Green Olympics, China invested more than 9 billion US dollars in the summer of 2020 to build a power plant powered by wind turbines and solar energy to supply electricity to the Olympic venues. At the same time, in an effort to avoid yellow or gray misty skies during the Olympics, Beijing used artificial rainfall to wash away the pollution and haze that hung over the city. The Washington Post published an article on January 24th that at least 250 shells were fired into the clouds near Jiangjiakou in the past three months and 12 cloud-seeding aircraft were on standby at local airports. The CCP has not made public the cost of creating a blue sky, let alone the damage caused by destroying the natural climate.
But Beijing's mayor has said that Beijing has invested 130 billion U.S. dollars in a five-year clean air action plan since 2013. Gavin Schmidt, a senior climate advisor at NASA, disapproves of man-made weather intervention. He told the Washington Post that cloud seeding has always been something for people who have more money than sense. China claimed abroad that Beijing's budget for the Winter Olympics was only 3.9 billion U.S. dollars, as half of the venues were from the 2008 Summer Olympics. But Business Insider predicted that the actual costs would be at least 10 times higher than the official figures. Beijing's official budget omitted dozens of items, and even the costs of some large projects were not included in the bill. Notably absent from Beijing's current list of expenditures, for example, is the National Speed Skating Stadium, known as the Ice Ribbon. According to publicly available information in China, it cost about 230 million U.S. dollars. Some of the 2008 Olympic venues needed to be renovated to meet the requirements of the Winter Games. And the cost of such renovations is unknown, because the CCP classifies many major projects as infrastructure improvements. The IOC doesn't count them as Olympic Games costs. For some projects, the government claims that the money is a donation from anonymous companies, but in reality, it has been recorded as a cash investment to develop the area. In Jiang Jiakou's Chongli District, Business Insider estimated that the Chinese government. Invested over five billion U.S. dollars to build 50 projects related to the Olympic venues. Building Olympic satellite venues like Yanqing and Zhangjiakou also requires a strong transportation infrastructure, including renovating airports, building new highways and high-speed rail, and driverless bullet trains. The user named Youke also revealed that just one such track cost more than 2.8 billion U.S. dollars. It's very expensive because the chemical cooling and heating agents have to be adjusted according to the weather conditions at the time of the competition in order to keep it at a constant minus 10 degrees. After the Olympics, such facilities will be scrapped basically because the cost of maintenance is prohibitive. He said the 2008 Beijing Olympics cost more than 100 billion U.S. dollars, and this year's Winter Olympics will cost more. For the CCP, the biggest surprise for hosting the 2022 Olympics is the boycott from countries around the world. At least six countries have publicly announced a diplomatic boycott, namely the U.S., the U.K., Australia, Canada, Lithuania, and Denmark. Several other countries didn't send officials due to reasons like outbreaks in politics, including Japan, Austria, Belgium, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Latvia, Sweden, and Estonia. So what is Beijing's solution? Instead of reflecting on whether it needs to change, the CCP has become more assertive in public and in private. It continues to burn money, hoping to buy people's hearts. An international athlete admitted to the Olympic Village showed in a video a gift package of 10,000 renminbi prepared by the organizers. It included a Samsung cell phone, Samsung sports headphones, custom-made Olympic rings, and necklaces worth about 1,200 U.S. dollars. According to Chinese media reports, almost every foreign athlete exclaimed after opening the gift bag that they didn't expect to get such a big gift for attending the Olympic Games. Oh my God! The number of athletes competing in the Winter Olympics is roughly 2,892. Based on this number, the expenditure for the big gift package alone amounts to more than three million U.S. dollars. The room and smart beds in the Olympic Village, as well as the rich meals, have also been praised by international athletes. For example, the smart bed has various functions: adjustable with built-in sensors, massage function, zero pressure, and an alarm clock that provides gentle nudges. It also provides support for the spine in different scenarios, such as sleeping and sitting positions. Oh, hi everyone! I just woke up from a zero gravity rest here at the main media center in Beijing after a very long day covering the Winter Olympics. This is not just a cabin with a bed, but the bed actually comes with special function that able to raise your head, legs, and the best thing is it comes with massage, which is more like a vibration. Nevertheless, it is really a very interesting features that we never seen elsewhere in other press center、um, that allow the hardworking journalists to rest their eyes for a few minutes or up to one hour. Except 
I would personally really like a little bit of privacy when I do that. Why is the CCP so generous towards international athletes? In addition to the desire to show off and demonstrate the might of great power, it is likely that the CCP is worried and hopes that athletes won't make undesirable comments during the Olympics, especially on the podium. Most likely, other accompanying officials, coaches, team doctors, media reporters, etc. have received gifts and enjoyed the luxurious facilities. On January 28th, a spokesman for the Chinese Foreign Ministry announced the list of international dignitaries attending the Olympics. Only 25 people were foreign dignitaries and members of the royal family. There were virtually no dignitaries from developed countries in the West. However, the presidents of five Central Asian countries Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan were present. Why did the presidents of these five countries attend? Is it related to the promise made by CCP leader Xi Jinping on January 25th? On January 25th, China and the five Central Asian countries held a video summit on the 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations. According to Xi's official speech at the summit, Beijing pledged to provide substantial assistance to the five Central Asian countries in the future including 500 million U.S. dollars in free aid to the Central Asian countries over the next three years. The next day at a regular press conference at the Chinese Foreign Ministry, a spokesman confirmed that at the 25th summit, the heads of the five Central Asian countries will be in China next week to attend the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics in Beijing. Although it has spent tons of money, the result has been embarrassing for the CCP, which prides itself on looking impressive. At the 2008 Summer Olympics, the attendees included 54 heads of state, 16 heads of government, 9 royal representatives, 1 regional head of state, and 4 presidential wives, including Western powers. From more than 80 heavyweight VIPs to the current list of some 20 guests attending the Winter Olympics, the enthusiasm surrounding the event should be felt not only by the top echelon of the CCP, but also by the Chinese people and the world. Compared to the speculation that the cost of the 2022 Winter Olympics ranged from nearly 40 billion to over 100 billion US dollars, the 2021 Tokyo Olympics seemed very modest. After the Tokyo Olympics, Chinese media reported, Japanese government auditors said the actual total spending exceeded 20 billion US dollars. This means that the total cost of the Games surpassed the 11.04 billion US dollars spent on the London Olympics making it the most expensive Olympics on record. This money could have been used to build more than 360 hospitals of 300 beds in Japan, to build 1,540 elementary schools, or to buy 50 jumbo jets. It looks like the Chinese media is good at doing math, except they won't be doing the math for the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics.